just think we should remember that when Governor McCall uh, out in Oregon stopped the highway uh, and built that waterfront park, uh, his, he needed to get a change in federal policy to get transit money instead of the money for the interstate highway. His ally on the other side of the country was then Governor Sargent, uh, who will, some people in this room, uh, uh, convinced the governor, first Mayor White, and then with a coalition including Cambridge and uh, Milton at the time, uh, and a lot of help from the suburbs as well. But we got Governor Sargent to change his position. It's a very hard thing for a politician to do. Uh, I, don't, I don't usually say good things about Republicans, and the few that I say good things about seem to have passed on. <laughs> I, I, don't, I think it's because today's Republicans are very different than the ones that we had. But uh, Sajjan was very courageous to do what he did. And uh, there's a direct connection between what you saw in that film in Portland and what happened here in Boston with Governor Sargent and Mayor White and then later uh, Mike Dukakis, who's, whose early role vis-a-vis -vis the highways uh, was fighting against the highways and far transit as a state rep. Uh, so he was in a way part of the, part of the citizen coalition that convinced Sargent to stop the highways and shift the money to its country. Uh, a lot of you have participated in the Southwest Corridor, so you know that whole history, but there's really a direct link to, to Portland that uh, is worth remembering. Uh, secondly, uh, the, uh, the so-called Conservation Law Foundation agreement that was part of the big dig towards the end is uh, substantially misunderstood uh, and it continues to be misunderstood you know, in today's globe. Uh, so, let me clarify a couple of things. Uh, the environmental impact statement on the Big Dig, which ended up being more or less 12 telephone books of, of paper, uh, had to make projections about what the roadway would function like 20 years later. Uh, now, 20 years later is now three years ago. The design year was 2010. And you had to build into the planning process assumptions about what transit would be available for people to use so you could figure out what share of people would use transit and uh, because some people were going to drive and more people would drive if the transit wasn't so good. What was built into the environmental impact statement on the big dig from the beginning having nothing to do with the Conservation Law Foundation, was the assumption that the then approved plans of the MBTA uh, in the so-called Program for Mass Transportation, the official 10-year plan, would in fact be built. Now, it shouldn't seem like such a radical proposition where a government agency would say, you know that stuff we said that we're going to do in the next 10 years? Well, we actually think it's going to be done at least within 20 years. That's how radical the idea was. It was a 10-year plan uh, that had been duly approved by everybody. Uh, and uh, the question toward the end of the big day environmental impact statement process raised by Conservation Law Foundation was basically, look, if Mike Dukakis were going to governor, we know, you, we know there would be at least that much transit, but we know he's not going to be governor, and we don't know who the next governor is going to be. We don't know if there will be the commitment to actually build the transit that the project assumes. So uh, their proposal is to sue, and thereby get a uh, federal court order uh, that would have implementation power to make sure that the transit got built. Uh, I said to Doug Foy, look, don't do me any favors. You know, we are imagining that you're going to get a really good judge like Judge Mazzone, who had done exactly that on the hopper cleanup. But Foy had been part of 
getting to have a clean up court audit in the zone was really the reason that WRA was able to get all that stuff done. Uh, but I said, you know, there are a lot of judges that have seen that too. You know, so who's to say we're going to get in the zone? Uh, we can get somebody who falls asleep during the trial and can screw the project up for years. Rather than going to court, let's just make an agreement that everything in the in the plan that's in the environmental impact statement will actually get built. Uh, radical thing. We actually meant what we said. Uh, and to enforce that, we will take those projects uh, and not only include them in this back pages of this environmental impact statement where everybody reads it, we'll make them much more visible and we'll put it into the state implementation plan under the Clean Air Act. Because if you fail, supposedly, if you fail to do the commitment that was made in the Clean Air Act, uh, the federal government was supposed to with, withhold 10% of your highway money. Well, with the big day coming up, 10% of the big numbers are big numbers. So FOIA agreed that that was a pretty significant enforcement mechanism. So we didn't go to court, we signed a memorandum of agreement, we put the, the list of projects from the original document into the state implementation plan. Uh, we did not do this behind the back of then incoming Governor Well, because as this discussion unfolded, Well became the governor elect. I knew Paul Solucci reasonably well in the legislature. And, uh, a fellow named Harold Hessness, a lawyer at the firm that Wells uh, had been aware of, was also on the Highway Business Committee, as it was then called, the Long Ripple Development Organized, and was intimately familiar with the big day and a big supporter of it. And, and the lawyer. I went to Hessness and to Salucci and said, Look, I want to make this deal with the Conservation Law Foundation, but I'm only a duck. I don't want to do that behind your back because you're the one that has to live with it. They said, no, 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 this is a good deal, do it. Uh, this is the right thing to do. So this was not a, you know, last minute in the Dukakis administration, let's tie the hands to the next guy. This was done with the approval of the incoming world administration. And in fact, the name on the <coughs> environmental documentation for the Clean Air Act, because the thing was started, the transportation agencies had to initiate it, and that happened when I was still in the government. But the state environmental <coughs> protection moves pretty slowly. So even though we got it done in 1990 in transportation, DEP had two subsequent actions. One in 1991 uh, on the vent shaft permits for the big day. The second one in 1993 when it finally approved the state implementation plan with all the projects in it. Uh, the name on those permits is Jim Karasiotis, not Fred Zalucci. So this, these were not personal commitments, they were commitments of a government agency saying we're serious about this, we're going to do it. Now unfortunately, they signed the permit, but they didn't do anything. Uh, you should have been able to ride on the blue to red connector by the year 2000. That's you know, 13 years ago. Uh, and all the states managed to do is a ridiculous environmental impact report that they've taken forever to do when they're still sleeping and they let it do it. Uh, and they say, oh, by the way, we don't need it anymore because now we have the silver line. Well, we've counted the numbers, and more people continue to use the blue line to go to local than the silver line. So it's all rubbish. But you should have been able to use the blue to red some time ago. You should have been able to get to Somerville and Medford on the green line by the year 2010. And there was a groundbreaking society of the dirt around that looks like, I hope, they're really going to get it into implementation. Uh, the outway didn't happen at all, because you know better than me. Well, you might know better than me. <laughs> well, I wasn't. I, I was concerned about the problems on Center Street, but I did agree to do it. It yep. was on the list, uh, and and uh, and you had powerful reps at the time who were pushing it. Uh, the problem was, it, it's not that you make a plan to single out. 
And these are East Boston, not Lynn, not Somerville, not Jamaica Plain, not Roxbury. Nobody got what they were supposed to get because they signed the documents and they didn't do it. 